Hi guys, welcome to BoxPed. Uh, we have an extremely interesting fight happening this weekend in the middleweight division. It sees Gennady Golovkin going up against Gregor's Proxer. And now this has the WBA World Middleweight title on the line as well as the IBO Middleweight title. And both of these guys have power in both hands and uh, this is you know, just a mouth-watering contest really. Let's talk a bit first about Gregor's Proxer, the challenger in this fight. Now, um, recently he had his first loss. He suffered his first defeat against Welshman Kelly Hope. And uh, I personally felt that Proxo didn't have to win that fight. Um, I think it was the European title and he had it at the time. And I didn't feel that Hope won the fight or did enough to, to, to take the title off the, uh, the, the champion. Um, since then, Proxer came back in his last fight and avenged that loss by stopping Kelly Hope in the 8th round. Um, I felt that he showed a bit more urgency in that fight and he was more aggressive. Um, in the first fight, I think it was a bit of a wake-up call for something that I'm going to mention about Proxer during this video. Um, in the way that he chooses to fight fights, in the way he chooses to box. Um, there's no doubt that Proxer is a very good boxer, in my, my opinion. I think he's talented. Um, he, like I said, he has power. Just to talk about how he boxes, um, he is quite a flashy boxer, Proxer. He likes to keep his hands low, he has a lot of upper body movement, a lot of foot movement, he, uh, his feet are moving all the time, really. Um, and he, you know, he likes to use, he's quite quick with his hands, he likes to use quick punches, he, he loves to use the straight left hand, like you see Bill Hopkins using, where he doesn't really show his opponent he's going to throw it, he just quickly throws it, and he lands them quite often. Um, you saw that in the last fight he had against Kelly Hope, he landed it with regularity. Um, but he's got power in both hands, he can also hit with the right hand, which he stopped, I believe he stopped Kelly Hope with the right hand. Um, you know, so he's got power in both hands. He is a southpaw, um, he's quite a tricky guy. Um, he's quite uh, elusive, he relies on the re reflex defence, so you know he's mo always moving around, but he keeps his hands low, and he's not a guy who keeps his guard up and sort of blocks, he's a guy who's just moving out the way of punches, okay? Um, so he relies on, on reflexes. He is a bit wild at times, and he gets a bit all over the place at times, and when I'm watching him I'm thinking he could be a bit more, uh, try and be a bit more controlled, with his boxing, sometimes he throws a wild punch and he'll miss, and he'll leave himself clean open because he doesn't, you know, he doesn't use his sort of a guard as such, um, and that could be a problem in this fight. Um, now, the main thing I wanted to mention about Proxer in this is that there's a, a point I want to raise about boxing vanity. Um, sometimes boxers, I think, can be guilty of trying to win in a stylish manner and try to look good while they win. Uh, but then they, they come up against a fighter who is able to find a game plan that seems to work and follow that game plan stringently and then get, cause them problems. And that fighter then, rather than adapting and becoming a, maybe perhaps a bit more serious and changing their style a little bit to match that and to get you know to, to win the fight, to just do what's necessary, they continue to fight in a stylish manner. They continue to fight trying to please uh, the viewers, trying to be... Um, perhaps just trying to look good, you know, winning. And I feel that's what happened to Gregor's Proxer in the first Kelly Hope fight. I feel Hope, uh, you know, found that game plan that was able to give cause Proxer a little bit of trouble. Um, it, you know, basically to stop Proxer walking away with it and running away with the, 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 the fight as he usually was with his other opponents. And um, Proxer wasn't able to adapt and become more serious in the ring. Because he's very show showy, very flashy, and you know he, he does a little bit of the shoulder roll, this and that, and he kept on doing that. And while I do think he won the fight against Kelly Hope, he left it too close to 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 have an argument. Really, you know he should have perhaps gone a bit more, gone back to the foundations, steadied himself a bit, controlled himself a bit, and not being wild, and being a bit um, more serious perhaps, and not not rather than be try and be a showman, just fight. What do what it needs needs to be done to win the fight. That's something I think Gregor's Proxer does lack um, is that ability to maybe adapt and the ability to just do what's necessary to win a fight. And he needs to, there's something he may need to use in this fight. I'm not sure if he has it. Um, I think Proxer should not look for the KO in this fight. 
not look to stop Golovkin, particularly early on. If he comes out and he's a bit wild, then it can all go balls up. He has the volume, the punch output, to cause Golovkin some real problems in this in this fight. Because Gennady Golovkin, for me, is a little bit of a slow starter at times, and he doesn't throw, particularly throw, a lot of volume, particularly early in the fight. Um, and then it, his fights, they don't tend to go on that long, so you don't really get to see how he, go, how he fares later on in the fight. Golovkin's a patient guy. He won't start out trying to knock your block off. He'll be patient and he'll stalk you. Gregor's Proxer's job in this fight, for me, is to stay away from Golovkin and then, you, and then use his ability and his natural talent, his, his speed, to come in, land a few shots on uh, Gennady Golovkin and then escape, just get back out of there. Doesn't want this inside, doesn't want to mix it up, because that's where Golovkin does damage. Golovkin's very heavy-handed. Prox is heavy-handed, but I don't think he should go looking. If he goes looking, he's going to take unnecessary risks, and they don't come if you're just looking for them. He needs to just let it, let it move, let it build. He's got the power to cause Golov to, to hurt Golovkin, to cause Golovkin's real trouble, but it's not going to come if he's looking for it. He's got to just maintain calm and try and you know pick his moments, try and keep remain accurate, and I think then it may come later in the fight. But if he should fight for the whole twelve, looking for the whole twelve rounds, and I think if he keeps his volume up, and causes, uh, you know, in, if he uh, uses that power he has to gain a little bit of respect from Glovkin, then he can actually try and maybe perhaps dictate a bit of distance in this fight, keep Glovkin a bit away from him, and he actually has a really good chance of winning this on points, Proxa, because I think he's quick, and he has. He's a bit quicker on his feet around the ring than Golovkin, put it that way. He can move from A to B quicker than Golovkin does. Maybe Golovkin can, but he doesn't choose to. So that stylistically, I think in terms of volume um, and work rate, perhaps Proxa has the advantage in this fight. Um, and that's the, something I think he really needs to build upon and look towards in this fight. Rather than looking for you know to prove he's the harder hitter, he has to prove that he... Um, is the quicker fighter and that he can move around a lot more and that movement is key in this fight with Proxer in my opinion. Just one last point on Proxer, he's a bit of a headhunter at times in my opinion, I think that's a disadvantage, I think he should really start trying to use look more to the body um, and not just go up top because when he comes up against world class opposition like Golovkin he's going to find that he needs to use a better variety of punches. Moving on to Golovkin, um, he has is also very powerful um, Proxer has 72% KO ratio, Golovkin has 87% around that mark. Um, he's very heavy handed basically, he's knocked out his last 9 opponents and he that's going back to 2009. This guy really is uh, got power in both hands. Um, he has more of a guard than Proxer, so he'll, he, he's not like an Abraham guard up here, but he's got a guard up and he's ready to defend himself. Um, and he also has very good head movement coming in. Golovkin's movement um, mustn't be underestimated. He stalks you. So he's very patient and he cuts off the ring very subtly but very effectively. He's extremely good at doing this. Um, he's on top of you before you know it. He's not a guy who moves his feet unnecessarily. And this is a big point. He's very calm in his style. His style is very calm and relaxed compared to Proxer. He's not bouncing around like Proxer. Proxer's going to be you know, all over doing this, all this stuff. Golovkin is just, you know, much calmer and he's just patient, waiting for the opening. And he, he's moving his feet very steadily. And there's, you know, with Proxer, sometimes you could see perhaps he might have both feet off the ground at times. With Golovkin, he's always got, you know, contact with the ground and you can see that's where he gets his power because he sits down on his punches and he's able to, you know, put his full force and full body into them because he's patient, he's calm in his style and he's got his feet in good contact. But, although he partic doesn't particularly look quick, he cuts off the ring very well, like I said. He, he doesn't move his feet unnecessarily, he just uses necessary movement, patient approach, and he stalks his opponent. If you look at his fa last fight against um, Fuchigami, who was also sort of a low-handed um, bit of a mover, he stalked Fuchigami for the first uh, three rounds that it lasted, and finally caught up with him. Um, he cuts Fuchigami early on, um, so, you know, showing his power, the concussive power that he has, and um, he's just, he, he has a good range of punches as well, so Golovkin likes to go to the body and then up top. Um, he's orthodox, so um, he has got a particularly good right hand, 
Um, but you know he he also throws good combos with his left as what well, included as well, so he can throw a good combo, and the left hand can just take you by surprise. Um, so it's you know good good uh, punch range. Um, disadvantage for Prox for um, Golovkin, I feel like I mentioned already, he can be outworked. At the moment, he's not. You know, neither of these guys have been facing world beaters. Okay, Golovkin is a world champion, and I think he has the talent to. Uh, to prove that he is at that level, but he hasn't really faced world beaters. He hasn't faced other champions. He has. This is probably this is going to be his, probably his best fight to date. I feel, um, Golovkin, um, and you know he can. I feel be outworked if Proxer is going to use a lot of volume because he's like I said, he's got that patient, calm approach. And if Proxer is going to throw quite a lot of volume and get out the way and make it difficult for Golovkin to catch him, then and use his you know, foot speed and movement then it could be a problem going the distance for Golovkin. So be aware of that in this fight. Um, something Golovkin does extremely well, and it may come into play in this fight, I'm expecting it to. Something Proxer really needs to look out for. Golovkin, being orthodox, when he's fighting southpaws, he gets his left foot on the outside of his opponent's right foot. Therefore, opening up for that right hand that he has, and squaring up his opponent for that right hand. He did it against Fujigami, he does it all the time, he is very effective at doing it and that's something I'm expecting him to do, to push, uh, maybe to you know, be coming forward, push Proxer back, get his left foot on the outside so he's opening up Proxer for that right hand and then he's going to start unleashing his combos, he's going to start trying to hurt Proxer. I think Golovkin might, may want this fight inside, he wants this as close as possible. Um, because I think he's more adept at fighting inside than Poxer. Poxer likes to keep maintaining a lot of distance. And whilst Golovkin's not particularly an inside fighter, I think it would favour him if it went inside. Um, so that's something Golovkin may want to do. I think I'm expecting, I'm expecting Golovkin to move forward and Poxer to move back more often than not. You know, Poxer against his lesser opponents, uh, because he has power, has dictated moving forward because of that power. The thing with Golovkin, because he has power as well, and he has a pretty good, pretty decent defence, um, I think that um, it may turn the tables here. And it'd be interesting to see how Proxer reacts to that, how he does when he's moved onto the back foot a bit, rather than just being on the front foot, um, which he's quite used to. Um, so, actually, I think that uh, I've said everything I really wanted to say. Um, you know, it's going to be a bit of a mental fight, um, in this because both guys are going up against you know probably the toughest, toughest opponents to date. I know Proxer beat Sil uh, Sebastian Sylvester before, but um, I don't think any guy he's faced is coming in with the reputation of power that, that Golovkin has, and uh, perhaps not the ability, definitely not the ability that Golovkin has. I think that um, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be interesting to see how each guy reacts and who takes the upper hand early on. So my advice to Proxer is to start off, patient, try and be a bit more patient, try not to swing wildly, um, but also, you know, uh, try and use volume, uh, make sure he stays up on the volume, to use his speed and his movement. Speed and movement, it's all about that. Um, I don't like how he drops his hands, because if he gets caught by Golovkin, then it could be good night, and it could happen at any period, because... You know, with Glovin's power and Proxer keeping his hands low, could end early. Um, I think Proxer will do pretty good early on. Um, I think he may uh, be able to, you know, um, implement what I've said about the movement. In terms of Golovkin, I would say do his usual thing, stay patient, don't rush, um, and he, it will probably come. I'm, I'm picking Golovkin by stoppage in round nine. I think it'll come a bit later. Um, on in the fight around then, um, I think Golovkin will catch up with Proxer. It may go early, earlier. Um, you know, Proxer's got power, but I think Golovkin has has a good enough defense not to be, um, not to, not. To, he's, he doesn't seem like the guy who's going to get carried away. He seems like a bit of a cleverer boxer than Proxer, in my opinion. He does. He's not. He's not a showman. He's not caught up in that showmanship, like Proxer tends to get get into. And I think if Proxer starts trying to be a showman in this fight and doesn't just focus on a game, some sort of game plan and doesn't focus on using his strengths to his advantage, I think he can, he's going to quickly find out that this is no place to be if you want to be a showman in the, in the ring with Gennady Glovkin. So I hope I've given all my points that I wanted to make here. I hope that um, 
you've enjoyed uh, the, the video. It's gone on to 15 minutes now. Um, but please let me know what you guys think. Um, I think it's a competitive fight, but I just think Golovkin's going to have a bit too much mental, um, you know, ring savvy, um, and a bit, bit, bit more mature than Proxer perhaps in this fight. And I think that's going to take him to a late stoppage victory. So let me know what you guys think. Um, thanks for viewing as always. This is Boxbread, and I am out.